everyone. Welcome back to our BGP hands-on series. In the last episode, we talked about the need for a full mesh IBGP session, but we really did not touch. So I thought it made sense for me to go ahead and you know uh, do a demonstration on why do we really need or why it is really required to have a full mesh IBGP session within an autonomous system and how really the next hop plays a role and we are also going to look another key concept or a rule of BGP uh, during this demonstration and I'm just staying with our previous topology so you can go ahead and take a look at the previous video uh, for that demonstration uh, for the topology now there is another thing I want to clear out here because I plan to show the need for an IBGP so I went ahead and removed all the IBGP session within our BGP AS1. And if you remember from the previous demo, in the BGP AS there are four ROs, R1, R2, R3, and R4, and we had an IBGP sessions. So I went ahead and removed IBGP session. There is only basic OSPF is within that AS for the reachability. And again, R1 has an EBGP session with the AS100. So those are our border routers and similarly the router R4 within AS1 has an EBGP session with AS300. With that keeping in mind, let's go ahead and you know uh, start exploring uh, some of the very basic things and then you know we'll go ahead and build and then explore why do we really need or why it is required to have a full IBGP you know, or full mesh of IBGP and how you know the next hop plays a role with that. So as I said or mentioned that ISP1 or the AS100 and AS1 has an EBGP between ISP1 router and router R1. So now let's take a look at you know what are the routes that the router R1 is receiving from the AS100. So we can go ahead and simply do that with the help of so IBGP. So we are taking a look at the BGP route table on the router R1. And we could take a look at that. These are the different routes or prefixes that this router R1 is receiving from our ISP1 router or, or from the AS100. Again, we could take a look at these are the prefixes. The next stop is really 11.11, .11, which is the IP address on the interface connected with the R1 on the ISP1 side. And again, we could take a look at the AS path attribute again being set as 100, really. So, an important thing to pay attention that it says, okay, hey, the router R1, it needs to reach any of these prefixes. Uh, this would be the next stop that it needs to reach, which is 172.16.11.11. Now, we are on the router R1. Now, if you remember, the router R1 for our topology, router R1 has a connection or connected directly to router R2 and R3 within the AS1. But it does not have a direct connection with router R4. While router R4 has a direct connection with router 2 and 3 and also has an EBGP session with the AS300. So now on the router R1, it is receiving these couple routes or couple prefixes from AS100. Now let's take a look at an R1 and see what R1 is advertising to rest of the router within the AS1. So the router R1 is connected to R2 as well as R3. So now let's take a look at the route that the R1 is advertising to the router R2. And for R2, the IP address is 10.0.0.33. Hope you recall. So I can just simply say show IP BGP for the neighbor. And the neighbor in this case is 10.0.0.30. And we are interested in looking at the advertise route. So on R1, we are checking, hey, what are the routes that R1 is advertising towards this particular neighbor? So let's simply go ahead and press enter. So we see that the RAR R1 is advertising seven prefixes. And you could see out of those seven prefixes, one, two, three, four, five, six prefixes that we received from ISP1. So, and there is another local prefix, which is, you know, because you can see the next hop being zero, zero. So these are the total seven prefixes being advertised by RAR R1 towards R2. And when it is advertising these prefixes towards R2, the next stop is not being changed. The next stop is being kept as the same that we received earlier, which is again the IP address on the ISP1 router side. So these are the, uh, so we can see, you know, these are the prefixes that are being received from, you know, external BGP AS100. 
and are sent to the internal BGP player, in this case to the R2. Now, similarly, on R2, we can go ahead and take a look at it because R1 just advertised these things to the R2, right? And we also notice that the R1 is connected with the R3. So we can also take a look at and see what R1 is advertising towards the R3. So for R3, the IP, I'm just going to repeat the command and the IP address for the R3 was 17. So we can take a look at 17. And you could see the R1 is advertising the same set of prefixes which it received from the external neighbor, which is in case the BGP AS100 ISP1 router. And it is advertising the same set of prefixes to the router R3. So that means whatever R1 is receiving, it is taking all of those external as well it's a local and it is advertising that to the RR2 and R3. And we can also verify and confirm that okay, hey, R1 says okay, this is what I'm advertising towards R2 and this is what I'm advertising towards R3. So we can go ahead and verify if that is really the case. But before I go ahead and do that, let's pay attention again to the first column. And clearly here it says okay, it's a valid and at best a route. Now if Edwin, if R1 is advertising towards R2 and R Three, because now they will be getting another route. So let's take a look at R2, you know, and then we'll deep dive into this one further. So if I do simply show IP BGP, we could definitely see, okay, hey, we are seeing some of these routes coming from, uh, again, a, a, we can take a look at the AS path attribute 100. These are coming from that uh, BGP AS100, where the next stop is 176.11.11, and these are the different prefixes that are being sent. So we see that all the six prefixes from the AS100 into onto the BGP routing table of our R2. Now we can also confirm the same thing on R3 and then see what R3 is receiving. So let's go ahead and read on the same command here. So we could simply say do the same thing. So I do BGP here too. And we could take a look at okay here it says that okay it is receiving from 11. And again, this is the next stop. But I just want you to pay attention here. It's a star which name indicates a valid and I really indicates an internet, but it doesn't say anything about the best. We'll go ahead and explore that and see what is really going on here. But we could clearly see that on RAR R3, we are able to see all the six prefixes that we are getting from IST1 RAR from the AS100. And you could see the next stop is again points to 116.11.11 which is again the interface on the ISP1 side. We know that the router R4 is connected with R2 and R2. We can take a look at and see what router R2, because we know that, okay, router R2 is receiving all these external routes from AS100. But now let's take a look at and see what R2 is advertising towards its neighbor. So R2 is neighbor with R1 and R4. And we are getting things from R1. So, but let's take a look at and see what are things that R2 is advertising towards R4. So, we can simply go ahead and run the same command. So, IP BGP neighbor. And for the R4, the IP address is 10.0.0.49. And we are interested in taking a look at the advertiser out. So, if you take a look at, we really do not see any of these routes that we are receiving from AS. 100 being advertised towards router R. So we can clearly see that there are no prefixes are received, you know, from internal BGP here and sent to the internal because see R1, R2 did receive these six BGP prefixes from R1. And that all happened via the I internal because we could see that here is an I really. But R2 is not advertising or any advertising any of these prefixes towards R4. We can go ahead and reconfirm the same thing uh, on R, uh, from the R3 point of view. Take a look at what R3 is. Is R3 advertising anything? So 10.0.0.49 and we are interested in the advertiser. Again, R3 is also not advertising anything. So because one of the BGP rule is kicking in place right now. And that rule is called as, and I'm sure most of you already know, is called as BGP split horizon for your IBGP simply. Because what that rule really indicates that, okay, hey, first of all, the whole idea, but when you receive an eBGP routes, okay, and when you pass to an IBGP, so BGP attributes are changed 
or they are not supposed to change any of the BGP attributes during an IBGP update. Okay. So in that case, the rule really indicates that okay, hey, if you are receiving some updates from your external uh, let's say EBGP and you are passing it to an IBGP, that IBGP uh, should not be propagating this update to further its IBGP PR. And this is also one of the mechanism employed uh, to really avoid the loop. So how do we really solve in that case? Because R2 is not going to advertise any of the route that it is receiving because of the BGP split horizon rule. Because as we said, the loop re the rule indicates, okay, if I received an IBGP update, I'm not going to go ahead and propagate this to my other IBGP PF. In this case, R4 is not going to have any of these routes that R2 or R3 is receiving from R1. Because R1 has a direct neighbor relationship with R2 and R3, but there is no direct connection between R1 and R4. R4 has only connection to R2 and R3 and that's where the BGP split horizon rule is coming in place and really uh, stopping because of that loop avoidance mechanism and none of these prefixes are being advertised to the R4. So how do we really solve that then? 